I want to unravel the mystique of Shel Cordovan. I want to break down like what is Shel Cordovan leather, why I like it, some of the common myths, what makes it so special. Is it a perfect leather? Maybe most importantly for you, if you want to try it, how do you know if Shel Cordovan is something that you'll enjoy? For those of you new to the channel, welcome. My name's David. I truly do have a passion for Shell Cordovan, and that's why I want to try and break this down in the simplest terms, as I often see a lot of common myths shared, both in different writings, as well as various forums where folks are talking about it and how to care for it. On the topic of caring for Shell Cordovan, there's always the conversation about smoothing out the rolls or caring for the rolls and scuffs and scratches in Shell Cordovan. I prefer the ebony stick. This is a tool that I designed with uh, a partnership with Dapper Woodworks. Stick around till the end of the video if you wanna hear more updates about the first batch that was pre-ordered in the beginning of December or are interested in finding out about when the next batch of the ebony sticks will be available. We'll touch on both of those topics at the end of the video. I wanna start with that. What is Shell Cordovan? The most reliable source to get information like this is always Google. So let's give that a try. Let's see what we get here. And of course the most Accurate is always Wikipedia, so I'll read you the definition. Shell cordovan, cordovan or cordwain, is a type of tanned fibrous connective tissue commonly used in high-end shoemaking. Cordovan is an equine leather made from the fibrous flat connective tissue or shell beneath the hide on the rump of the horse. I'll let you guys dive further into that definition if you would like, but that covers the basics. Shell cordovan comes from a horse. It comes from the horse's butt or their rump under the two hindquarters. You usually get two like ovals, one on each side. And uh, let me give you a quick like visual and a comparison to what this looks like in calfskin. So this is a cut of shell cordovan. The way that this essentially works is the reverse side of the shell is actually the skin of the horse. Let's look at a, an example of a calfskin hide here. Now, this is completely different than horse hide. There are no shells in calfskin, but for the purposes of kind of giving you a reference point, just bear with me. So this is the uh, skin side of a calfskin. This is the side that faces outward on your shoe or boot or leather jacket. And then you have the reverse side or the flesh side. Skin side, reverse side or flesh side. Now that we're looking at the shell cordovan again, this is the skin side. This is the flesh or reverse side. And they are actually shaving away that flesh to reveal the shell or that fibrous dense tissue, otherwise known as the shell. Now, why do I love shell cordovan? This started when I first started collecting shoes and boots. I was very skeptical as others seem to romanticize the leather like I'm gonna do right now. But once I decided to uh, justify the price to myself and give it a shot, things started to resonate much more. The leather just behaves much differently when you're wearing a shell cordovan shoe or a boot and it's, it's hard to articulate or put into words. It's a bit more like robust leather. And you feel that when you're wearing it. And that, at least for me, translates into a feeling like I have a more premium pair of shoes on my feet. I find it to be very comfortable and very easy to care for. Simply, all you need is a horsehair brush. You can brush these 5, 10, 15 minutes and it's going to make a significant difference and really kind of bring out this like natural luster and finish that really cannot be replicated in calfskin without adding a lot of additional product on top of the leather. What makes Shell so special? There are two main things. First, many will say Shell Cordovan does not crease. And that's true when you think about how traditional calfskin leather creases. Typically, you're going to see shell cordovan roll, and that just emulates the fact that there are no micro creases in the folds of the leather. Folks like that because it kind of maintains a new shoe for a longer period of time, but ultimately, shell cordovan does crease or bend or fold. It's just not going to show those micro creases. One of the other reasons that many people love shell cordovan is for the wide range of colors and what some will call rare colors. I may dispute that title in, you know, its merits, but the rare colors really do have kind of a cult-like following. And if this is something that you get into, I'm sure you'll eventually cross that bridge. The colors. Are there actually rare Shell Cordovan colors? I'll say yes and no. 
I take issue with the title of a rare shell quarterman color because the premise of it being rare, it's a combination of factors, both in the complexity that it takes to make a lighter color pair of shell quarterman, as well as just what manufacturers like shoemakers are actually ordering from the tanneries. First, yes, it is more difficult to make a natural shell cordovan or a natural color shell cordovan hide. And that's simply because there has to be zero imperfections in the leather. Even if it's just a visual, it can't be there because the color is completely translucent and you're gonna see every single thing. In a much darker color of shell cordovan, like one of the most popular color eight, which is a very dark brown burgundy, all of those imperfections, kind of the, the darker splotches that you may see that come naturally in the hide from the horse, they're much easier to cover up in the tanning process. And therefore it is easier and, you know, a higher volume of darker shell cordovan can be made much faster with, you know, a higher tolerance of what they can accept in those hides. The other factor of just what shoemakers are ordering from tanneries such as Horween is Horween produces what people are putting orders in for. It's typically like, I think a 12 to 18 month ordering process. So you order the color 12 to 18 months later, you get your order of shell cordovan. They're not going to just randomly start making, you know, whiskey, natural bourbon, shell cordovan orders that people aren't placing. They're going to make the shell cordovan colors that people have placed those orders for because of that the shoemakers are placing orders for the colors that you're seeing out there in the market. Essentially, if they were placing as many orders for whiskey as they were for color eight, you would see whiskey much more often than you do today. The next myth I wanna tackle is whether or not this is a leather. Many will say that it is not because it's a muscle, not a skin, but I take issue with that. It is a muscle. Leather simply refers to uh, the result of putting something through the tanning process. Once this goes through the tannage process, shell cordovan is a leather. Does shell cordovan stretch? Yes. I don't care what others say. If shell cordovan did not stretch, you could not turn it into a shoe or a boot. It would crack every single time you did that. It stretches. How do you care for shell cordovan? I'm not so naive to think there's only one way to care for it, but I do think my way is the best for me. All I would say is treat it like any other leather. When it needs to be hydrated, condition it. When it's dirty, wipe it off and brush it. And if you're unsure what to do, brush it. Shell cordovan is very dense and rich in the oils, waxes, and fats that are tanned into it from the tannery. And the best thing you can do is brush those vigorously for five to 10 minutes. We'll do a great job to heat that up and disperse it back into the leather, creating that high natural luster. Is shell cordovan perfect? No, even though it's my favorite leather, I'm not going to uh, try to convince you that it's a perfect leather. It's just that it's my favorite based off of the characteristics and the visual aesthetic that it provides. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to tell you if it is or is not right for you. But what I can tell you is there are plenty of great pre-owned options out there. If you're on the fence and you're not sure, I definitely encourage you looking at that route because it's much more cost effective, but ultimately the only one that's gonna be able to decide if it's right for you is you. And the only way you can do that is by experiencing it for yourself. For those of you waiting for the update about the ebony stick, this is a tool I designed with Dapper Woodworks to care for Shell Cordovan. The first batch is complete and has shipped out earlier this week. And I couldn't be more excited to finally get these in, in all of your hands and hear what all of you think about it. The second batch is going to be released this upcoming week. Stay tuned for more information on my Instagram and YouTube community page, and I will provide specific details about the date and the time of when that batch is gonna be released on the Dapper Woodworks website. Hopefully you guys found this helpful or at least enjoyed kind of the uh, shelvage history of Shell Cordovan. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the material that I covered here or wanna see any particular topic in more detail. If you want to see the playlist of Shell Cordovan care videos that I've done, check out this playlist over here. And if you want to check out the Shell Cordovan podcast, check out this playlist over here. I really appreciate those that have stuck around this long, and I'll see you all very soon.